On the breakfast this morning, the Independent National Electoral Commission releases a final list, has released a final list of presidential candidates for, the all, for all the political parties contesting the next year's general elections. We'll look at the implications of this on the program today. Also, the National Association of Nigerian Students has drawn a timetable for its nationwide protests. We released this on Monday. We'll discuss this with the Vice President of the Association, Akinte Babatunde. And also, we will look at the headlines on the pages of today's national newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. We call it of the press. We're back with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartel. It's a beautiful Thursday morning, and uh, we have another round of discussions and analysis of the important issues that matter uh, to you right here on the program. Once again, you're welcome. I'm not alone alongside Messi Bopo. We'll be doing justice to uh, the topics on the program with our guests and analysts today. All right, as usual, we have a top trending segment is what we would always start the program with, uh, looking at what discussions are going on online, on social media, where the word trending is uh, synonymous. Uh, of course, um, the situation in the People's Democratic Party has been... Uh, talked about a lot, really, um, with uh, the leaders in the party, the big personalities in the People's Democratic Party not being able to uh, get their acts together to be able to form one single front uh, ahead of the 2023 presidential election. Now, this has been a problem. Uh, it's been some back and forth between Yen Song Wike, uh, who came second in the party's presidential primary, and uh, as Atiku Abubakar, uh, who won the party's presidential uh, primary, of course. Um, uh, Atiko Bobakar paid a, a visit to Yenso Miki to say, you know what, probably no victor, no vanquish, like uh, Chris Ngigi said yesterday after, uh, in reaction to the industrial court uh, order to Asu. But, but, but immediately Yenso Miki landed in Port Hackett. Uh, he was uh, a, a complaint after the other. He didn't have some nice words to say about his experience in Abuja. Um, fingered some persons, especially governors from the South, who went back on their word uh, to support the Southern, uh, Southern candidate emerging as uh, the presidential or Southern aspirant emerging as a presidential uh, candidate of the party. It's gone from there, there to um, yes, when we get governor of River State. And uh, those members of the PDP who support him uh, who are on his side, his group, we can call it maybe his faction, if you want to use that word, um, calling for the resignation of the party's chairman, Iyochayu, Senator Iyochayu, um, former minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, under Lushego Basanger. You can see pictures of Yesu Miki in there. Uh, he's used several, um, you know, occasions. He's uh, commissioning a uh, you know, flag of projects in River State that usually would have uh, live national television coverage paid for by the River State government has used these occasions to, uh, to, to, to talk and castigate the PDP, his party, and of course uh, Atiku Abubakar. Well, the latest is that uh, members of the PDP who are in the camp of uh, Yesung Wike uh, had a meeting on Wednesday morning, yesterday morning, and uh, rising from that meeting, uh, they announced that they were withdrawing from the campaign council of the party's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. Well, the WK camp uh, is saying that uh, they will not be part of the Atiku campaign activities pending the resignation of the party's national chairman, Iyochea Ayu. Now, they made this resolution in the early hours of Wednesday in a special meeting they held at, at Governor WK's private and sprawling uh, residence uh, in or, on Ada George Road, Obiakpo, local government area of River State. The agreed members also uh, are vowing not to associate with the party's campaign activities for Atiku until Ayu's matter on resignation is settled. And uh, what they're simply saying is that um, we can't have the presidential candidate of the party being uh, from the northern part of Nigeria and the chairman of the party also coming from the northern part of Nigeria if uh, we couldn't stick to the principle of rotation uh, of, of the presidential ticket or candidacy uh, to the south, at least let's have the, the chairmanship of the party from the south to ensure equity, ensure balance as well 
in accordance with the uh, dictates of the PDP constitution. All right, so that is what they're saying. Um, the, the wiki camp is growing larger. The wiki camp is growing uh, wider. Uh, more people are joining the fray. Uh, wiki seems to be the one who is a unifier. Uh, if you want to look at the words of uh, Atiku Abubakar. <laughs> now, uh, Olabode George, uh, one of the leaders of the PDP in the Southwest and in Lagos State. He's a former uh, deputy national chairman of the party. Uh, well, he's part of the group. Yes, he is. Um, the meeting included some current and the former governors, uh, founding members of the PDP, uh, former ministers and leaders of the party. We've never seen a lot, George, as part of this meeting at Wiki's uh, residence in, uh, in, in Port Harcourt, you know, that picture in front of his, uh, his, his door, you can see it's growing. Look at the picture there, it's growing. I don't know if a ticket people are seeing what's going on, um, but Chief Olabode George, it was, was lent, read the resolution, okay? And uh, he said that they were deeply concerned about the division in the People's Democratic Party, despite the party's age-long internal mechanism uh, designed to guarantee inclusiveness. Inclusiveness, and they maintained uh, their, that their position was not negotiable, as the chairmanship of IU uh, undermined the unity and the constitution of the party. Um, they further accused the national chairman of the PDP of compromising the May 28 and 29 presidential primary of the party through his conduct. All right, remember he went to um, uh, Tambua, followed uh, Tiko Borka on a visit to Tambua because Atiko was visiting some of the, his uh, co aspirants and he was hailing Tambua. And Wiki has not, uh, he didn't see that as being funny. He's talked about that in the past. So this is where. They stand, you know. Part of those who were at that meeting uh, was one of those. There was a former Plateau State Governor, Senator Jonah Jang, who has been in uh, Port Harcourt you know, in recent weeks or months. He even uh, did a flag off. He drove a road a caterpillar to, to do a flag off. Um, uh, he's recently had a, a, I think, a court case go in his favor. One of those um, uh, cases against him, I think it's bordering on corruption or something. I need to check. But uh, since then, he's had a court case go in his favor, and uh, you know. Kudos to him. Congratulations to him. He's found his voice. And um, he said that uh, for a court, for a national chairman uh, to go and embrace the Sokoto State Governor, Minu Tambo, calling him a hero. You know, in that clip, uh, when they, uh, the team from the PDP, including Atiku, went around visiting, uh, Ayu said, you're a hero. You're a hero. Now, Tambo stepped aside and threw his weight behind Atiku Abubakar in that presidential uh, primary. Uh, so what Jonah Jang said is that uh, uh, Tambua or Iyoche, are you calling Tambua a hero uh, of the convention? You are a hero of the convention. Meant that there was a private arrangement that was done with Tambua to shortchange other contestants, including Governor Wike. Uh, so you are a hero of the convention. Does it mean that um, we arrange something behind the scene? I mean, uh, if Tambua stepped down, is it not his right to step aside and say? I'm throwing my weight behind uh, one of the candidates. It's normal in politics. But this is what uh, John Jang says. It means that there was uh, a behind-the-scene arrangement to, with Tamwell to shortchange other contestants, including Governor Wike. Uh, this is what uh, John Jang said, more of what he said. Quote, he was a referee who helped one of his sides to score a goal and then blew the whistle. This is not what we formed the PDP to do for Nigerians, he said. Therefore, we are unequivocally asking that IU must step down. All right. Um, the Ayo State Governor, Shea Makinde, was also part of that meeting. Don't forget, uh, as one of the leaders of uh, PDP in the Southwest, because he's one of the, the two governors of the People's Democratic Party in Nigeria Southwest, when Atiku visited the Southwest to consult with stakeholders of the party, uh, uh, Makinde had to host him in Ibado, the Ayo State capital. And he described Atiku as the incoming president of Nigeria in 2023. But he said that Ayu must step aside. Uh, and this is what he said after the meeting at Wiki's house. You can see the likes of Donald Duke and others there. Um, we hope that the powers that be listen to the voice of reason and do uh, the needful. Others who are joining the growing team, uh, Team Wiki, include uh, Professor Jerry Garner, who's a former minister of information. He's also done one or two project commissioning or flag offs in River State uh, recently. Um, he also said a couple of things. I won't go into details. 
but pictures are also on the internet. Um, I see Lushego Mimiko there as well. Donald Duke, I see him there. Um, Ayo Fayoshe is also there. Do Ayo Fayoshe has been, he's been in between, sort of. He's been, a, you know, a wiki loyalist, but he recently said that, um, uh, you know, those who, uh, Atiku is not the problem, but those who are misinforming Atiku and trying to create a problem between Atiku and Wiki uh, are the problem. So it's a growing list, a growing list, and uh, we'll only monitor to see what uh, will come out of this. I'm sure, of course, um, the the nation newspaper will have something to say about that this morning. So let's let's move on uh, to our next uh, uh, trending story. All right. Now, of course, yesterday we were expecting to hear the outcome uh, of a court sitting over the ASU strike. Don't forget um, the federal government had approached the National Industrial Court. Let's, 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 let's describe it as that. Had approached the National Industrial Court to uh, wade into uh, the impasse uh, between it and the striking lecturers uh, under the aegis of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. ASU... The uh, federal government took ASU to court. Uh, the, this is what people have been saying. But the Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Dr. Chris Ngigi, has told everyone who cares to listen that the federal government didn't take ASU to court. It's what he said a couple of days ago at an NLC event. I think it's NLC at 40. He said the federal government didn't take ASU to court. He said, when there seemed to be no way, all right? You know, there's a, there's a gospel song that says, God will make a way when there seemed to be no way. Um, but Ngige says that he is not God to make a way where there seemed to be no way. So when there seemed to be no way in the negotiations, a way forward between him uh, on behalf of the federal government or the Ministry of Education on behalf of the federal government uh, and ASU, that uh, Section 17 of the Trade Disputes Act of 2004 kicked in, uh, which says that, um, you know, if this, there's no headway, I'm just, you know, quoting it loosely now, there's no headway, no way forward, uh, the minister ought, should approach the National Industrial Court, refer the matter, let's call it a refer the matter to the National Industrial Court so they can determine which way to go. Uh, both parties should go. Now, uh, this is why Ngigi has educated us to say I did not, we didn't take ASU to court. This is just in obedience to the Trade Dispute Act, Section 17 of the Trade Dispute Act 2004. So, well, the matter has been in court now. Oh, those people are saying, oh, uh, uh, the National Industrial Court has told us to end their strike. The National Industrial Court did not tell us to end their strike. What they did was to uh, give a ruling on an application for interlocutory injunction by uh, the lawyers to the federal government. All right, and uh, that interlocutory injunction simply means that um, the party affected uh, is, is ordered to stop doing something or to, to return to the status quo ante. So they will have to go back to the classroom. While the case continues, um, like lawyers from both pa sides, or parties said after the court case yesterday, hearing uh, yesterday, pending the determination of the substantive matter, all right? Pending the determination of the substantive matter. So this is by no means the end of this case case. This is by no means the end. So the, the court is simply saying we are granting this or ordering an interlocutory injunction uh, on ASU's strike. You are to return to the classroom um, whilst we continue listening to both sides. Of course, the, 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 the judge can't just make that order. It has to be based on a ruling or an application, sorry, for inter interlocutory injunction from the, the other party, this time being the federal government. So the lawyer made that application because said, okay, fine, I give it to you and I order us to go back to the classroom uh, uh, pending the determination of the substantive matter. Um, what we're hearing from the union, the striking lectures, is that they will appeal uh, this, this, this order, this ruling. They will appeal it. Um, counsel to the government, James Seagway, had prayed uh, the court for that interlocutory injunction, restraining ASU from taking further steps as regards the strike pending the determination of the substantive suit. All right, so um, the council had submitted that Section 18 
sub 1 e of the trade dispute act provides that employees cannot be on strike when a matter is before the industrial court employees cannot be on strike when a matter is before the industrial court so that is that i think it's black and white a lot of people have been emotionally saying oh uh, the judge does he not have a child does he not have maybe he or she or she doesn't have children in nigeria university that's why uh, he's giving such an order but the thing is this as um uh, 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 a judge a member of the, the the bench you are expected if you get to that position it means that you merit it you're expected to be impassionate you're expected to be fair you're expected to not make uh, judgments or give orders are based on how you feel or based on how many children you have in a Nigerian university. You know, you're meant to make orders and rulings based on black and white. What is on paper? What is on paper? So um, I think people need to understand what is going on here. Uh, people need to understand the, 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 the laws, the relevant laws, and even what the federal government is relying on uh, to... Uh, to uh, to approach the National Industrial Court. Um, I think as to themselves, because some people have been saying uh, they shouldn't go back to the classroom. Indeed, when the ASU leadership led by their national president met with uh, uh, Senate of House of Representatives Speaker, Right Honorable Femi Baja Biamila, uh, yesterday, two days ago, two nights ago, um, he made a statement. He said that, um, uh, you know what, the federal government or the court, if they rule, you know, against us, force us to go back to the classroom, it will be like uh, telling a doctor who doesn't want to treat a patient to treat that patient. He's asking now, will you, federal government, or will the court, or will anybody want to be treated by such a doctor? Will anybody want to be treated by such a doctor? It's sort of uh, saying that, um, well, you can force a horse to the river, uh, but you cannot force it to drink water. You can force a horse to the river, but you can't force it uh, uh, to drink water. So it remains to be seen uh, if the lecturers will obey this, uh, this court order. But as we're saying, they're going to appeal it, and I'm sure that they know um, uh, the implications of, of, <laughs> of not obeying the court order. There's something called contempt of court, and it simply means that uh, if you don't uh, obey what the court says or you go against the ruling of a, a, a court of comp competent uh, a jurisdiction, you could be uh, charged and found guilty of contempt of court. And uh, uh, going by the criminal code, uh, what I saw there, I don't know if that affects this case, but by the criminal code stipulates uh, there should be three months imprisonment for anyone uh, who, who um, uh, uh, defies court order. You know, and some people are saying, "Oh, don't mind the government. Uh, federal government, they always they don't obey court orders." You know, you have several cases in point. Oh yes, 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 that might be true. But you see, um, if they don't obey court orders and a judge does not, you know, find them guilty of of uh, uh, contempt, um, should you go and also put yourself in that situation? Because you shouldn't say uh, what happened to the goose who happened to me, the gander. You know, so I think I'm so aware that there's nothing emotional about this. I think they're aware and they have sound legal advice. I mean, Chief Femi Falano is, um, is involved in this. He'll give them sound advice that uh, we have to tread cautiously, go back to the classroom or let's appeal and let's see what happens. So they're gonna appeal this, this ruling. Let's see uh, how it pans out. There's nothing emotional about this. If they don't go to the classrooms, it'll be contempt of court and uh, the leadership of us could be spending the next three months in prison. I think, I hope I'm correct with that. All right, let's move uh, back to Lagos State. Uh, some video trending on social media a couple of days ago showing certain persons uh, suspected to be members of the uh, operators of the parks and garages um, body, the newly formed parks and garages body, uh, sort of custom made for MCO Lomo, who is the head, um, forcing a tricycle, commercial tricycle operator to buy a sticker a sticker that um, has the, the face of uh, politicians on it, that has a face of politicians on it, um, uh, bearing the picture of the chairman 
of the Lagos State Parks and Garages Management Committee, uh, MC Romo, officially known. His government name is Mr. Liu Akin Sonia. Also bearing the face of Governor Babajide Sanwolu and also bearing the face of APC presidential candidate Bola Metinbo. There was a deal of condemnation. You can see that. I think we should just listen to that clip and then we'll come back. Let's go. Up Lagos State. Progress. The notice of the Lagos State Parks and Garages chairman is hereby on the fake and malicious moves and motives of elements bent in tarnishing the image and prestige of our own state chairman, Alaji Dr. Musiliu Ainde Akisonya, on the purpose of displaying on social media <coughs> stickers of our state chairman with that of the presidential candidate of APC, his running mate and that of Governor Babajide Olushola Sawolu, and forcing commuters and operators to buy the stickers for the sum of 1,000 naira. These are the punitive moves and motives of this ground truth element yes, to soil the image of our chairman and, and bring to disrespect the towering popularity of Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu and his political son, Governor Babajide Olusola Sawolu. We hereby debunk this malicious move. It does not emanate from Lagos Parks and Garages and our state chairman. We will never stoop so low to the extent of doing all these things. And we use this medium to warn all our political enemies who have all bent in distorting the fragile peace, tranquility, oneness, and togetherness we enjoy in Lagos and in Nigeria in particular. So we are using this medium to, to say equivocally that this sticker did not emanate from our allergy, Dr. Musilu and Yaki Soya. Yes. We will never stoop so low to the extent of forcing stickers yes. on somebody. In, in fact, to the extent of forcing stickers on someone with political intention. So, for the public, we hereby debunk this in totality. So, thank you so much. Up Lagos State. Progress. Yes. One love. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. God bless you. God be to you. Inshallah. I show you local. Our local. So we local. So we local. All right. <laughs> um, if, if in case you got it mixed up, um, uh, uh, MC Olomo is not the one who was speaking. He was the one who was saying yes, yes, yes. It's true. Yes, and he's the one in the blue cup, uh, first cup there. But I wish we could go back to that the clip showing the stickers being foisted on a taxi driver. That's a tricycle taxi operator. Is that, is that available? Okay, let's go there. I know the pain. I know the pain. Even because I will pack this again, I don't have time again. I know the pain one day. I take your sticker. I don't want to say no put that. Okay, no put this. My name is going to be one. No put. I don't have one now from my hand. I don't tell you. I don't have one now from my hand. No put this for this again. Let's wait. Let's wait. No, I put them for you. Put them for you. So that that's the drama, you know, some of uh, the taxi operators, be it tricycle, you know, motorcycle, uh, normal vehicles or buses have to go through uh, in Lagos State. It's nothing strange. Um, they pay all sorts of rates, all sorts of levies. Uh, you know, some of them pay as much as 500 naira a day. Some pay as much as uh, uh, an amount of money per trip, you know, per trip. And uh, so it's not, you know, a surprise that a lot of people who believe the narrative that MC Olomo, who was erstwhile ahead of uh, the National Union of Road Transport Workers in Lagos State, but uh, of course they kicked him out and the government found him some, some other thing to do. 
um, he's still in charge of the motor parks and transportation, you know, uh, tax collection in River in Lagos State. It's more of a tax collection thing, really. You know, how much can be made from the daily operations, uh, you know, of these uh, uh, transport uh, workers. Nothing about the welfare of the workers. Mostly about uh, the taxation. And uh, you can understand why people would, would suspect. But he has come out, and I give credit to MC Loma for putting this statement out to saying he doesn't know about it. But I mean, some people saying, okay, you know what? He said he's too big for it. You know, what is 1,000 naira? But MC Loma, um, I mean, of course, who you are today, what you are, is as a result of, you know, your, your hard work, hard work in ensuring that these daily tolls, these daily levies, these daily uh, rates or taxes are paid by the transportation workers. So you know, if you multiply 1,000 naira by all the tricycles in Lagos State, you know what we're talking about. Um, some people have made allegations that uh, they are forced to buy fest caps, you know, to wear that show the picture of uh, Tinubu and campaigning for him and all that. We cannot substantiate these, uh, uh, these, these claims, but these are some of the things flying around there. I think, uh, we, I mean, MC Law has spoken for himself, and so that's that. Hopefully, um, the police can wait. This is something worth investigating. The police should wait into this matter to find who the people are who are selling these tickets. They are captured on, on film. Someone filmed them. So the police needs to wait, wait into this because this is an offense, really. It's extortion. The police needs, if the police in Lagos State does not wade into this to arrest the people concerned, then of course they won't be doing their job. We have to go. We will take a, a detour at this point, and when we come back, we'll look at uh, the headlines on the front pages of the National Dailies. Ezekiel Inyaitu joins us in a jiffy.